Hi, boys and girls, and welcome to Chapter 7 of Hachiko Waits. So yesterday we learned that Hachi took off. He left um, Yasu's house and he ran. And the minute they opened the door to take him for a walk, he bursted out and ran. We don't know where he went, so hopefully we'll find out um, what happens to Hachi. And we will see how the con story continues. So here goes Chapter 7. The morning after Hachi disappeared, Yasu woke up early. He washed himself quickly, put on his school uniform, and hurried into the room to speak to his mother. Good morning, son. Or good morning, mother, Yasu said. Did Hachi come back? No, Mrs. Takahashi said. Your father looked for him before he left for work, but he did not find him. I am sorry, Yasu. Come sit down and eat something. Yasu sat on his cushion, picked up his chopsticks, and tried to eat some rice, but he could not. He could not even take a sip of miso soup. There was no room for food in his stomach. It was too full of sadness. We will never see the professor again, Yasu said, his voice heavy with sorrow. And now we will never see Hachi again. Yasu stood from his cushion and gathered his school books, moving slow as a turtle. As soon as he and his mother left the house, he began to search for the professor's dog. Hachi! Hachi! Yasu called, cupping his hands around his mouth. Then he stood very still and listened, but he did not hear the footsteps of an Akitakin. Yasu took two more steps, stopped, and cupped his hands again. Hachi! Yasu did this all the way to the train station, but it was no use. Hachi was nowhere to be found. The station master greeted them eagerly at the top of the stairs. Good morning, Mrs. Takahashi. Good morning, Yasu, he said. How is Hachi? He ran away, said Yasu, looking down at his shoes. We do not know where he is. He is such a handsome dog. I am sure someone will take him in and care for him, said Mr. Yashikwa, trying to make Yasu feel better. I hope so, said Mrs. Takahashi. Yasu had a hard time paying attention to his schoolwork that day, and he did not do well, even in math, his favorite subject. Usually, Yasu moved the beads on his bus abacus swiftly along their rods and called out the answers to addition problems long before his classmates did. But today, he could not concentrate. All morning long, Yasu worried about Hachi. Was he hungry? Was he thirsty? Was he safe? He knew it was not his father's fault, but still he wished that somehow his father could have held on to Hachi's rope more tightly. But Yasu knew Hachi would have run away eventually. The Akita would never rest until he found the professor. And as soon as Yasu had that thought, an idea crossed his mind. Maybe, just maybe. Yasu's mother met him when school let out, and they walked to the station. When they boarded the train to Shibaiwe, Yasu pulled his mother through the train until they stood in the first car right in front of the door. What are you in such a hurry for today? Yasu's mother asked. Yasu did not answer. He wanted to keep his thoughts to himself, hoping if he did so, what he yearned for would be true. As soon as the train pulled into Shibaiwe Station and the door slid open, Yasu leaped onto the platform, and just as he had hoped, there was the golden brown Akitakin, sitting in his usual spot, waiting for the professor. Hachi! Yasu cried, throwing his arms around the dog's neck. Hachi wagged his tail once and allowed Yasu to hug him, but he did not stray from his task of looking up at each passenger who stepped off the train, hoping to catch sight of his master's face. Mr. Yashiqua hurried up to Yasu and his mother. I am so glad you are here to see for yourself that Hachi is all right. He arrived a little before three o'clock, just like always. I knew he would be here, said Yasu. He stroked Hachi's neck. He has not given up hope, said Mrs. Takahashi. She watched as the dog's dark eyes searched the face of every single person on the platform. He is very devoted. Would you like to help me take care of him? The station master asked Yasu. <clears throat> Sorry, guys, I had a tickle in my throat. Um, he will need food and water every day. He will need his thick coat brushed to keep it shiny and clean. The station master looked over at Hachi, and he will need someone to keep him company. I will come every day after school, Yasu looked up at his mother. Please, mother. Mrs. Takahashi knelt down beside her son. Yasu, do you remember what your father said about taking care of a dog? So here's just a picture of them at the station. Yes, 
mother. He said it was a big responsibility and it would be my duty for a very long time. Do you feel that you are ready to take on such a big responsibility? Yes, mother. Yasu's mother looked at her son. She looked at the station master. She looked at Hachi. Another train screeched into the station, discharging a horde of passengers and left the platform. Mrs. Takahashi watched Hachi's head move to the left and to the right as he made sure to look at every face of every person who came his way. Yes, she said at last, it is what the professor would have wanted. I know you will be good to Hachi, and he will come back to the train station every day because he knows you will care for him. No, mother, said Yasu. He will come back to the train station every day to wait for the professor. And that is the end of chapter seven. Join me tomorrow for chapter eight.